Again, good afternoon. My name is Marcus Stuckey. I'm the Director of Engineering for Harris County Flood Control District. I'd like to welcome you all out tonight. Uh, we're going to talk to you about the Kate Hockey Wetland Mitigation Bank. Um, again, we really appreciate you all coming out. There's a lot more people here than I expected, so I'm kind of excited. I get more than five people to talk to other than the staff of Harris County. So, again, I really appreciate it. Um, a little bit about the format of tonight's meeting. I'll give you a general uh, overview of Harris County Flood Control District, our roles and responsibilities, kind of what we do, who we are. That'll be followed by a presentation by Rick, who is the engineer of the project. So the Harris County Flood Control District, we are a special purpose di district that was created in 1937. And we're created in response to the floods that devastated the Houston area in 1929 and 1935. Uh, we serve as a local partner to leverage federal tax dollars uh, for flood damage reduction projects. And uh, the Harris County Commissioner's Court serves as our board of directors or our governing body. So the mission of the Harris County Flood Control District is to provide flood damage reduction projects that work with appropriate regard to community and natural values. And I'll let you know ahead of time that the project that we're here to talk about tonight is one of will be a project that's one of those natural values that we do like to try to hold to. Um, what you'll see here is a map of Harris County. Harris County consists of approximately 22 watersheds. Uh, that that's about 1,800 square miles of area that drains just within the Harris County boundary and about 2,200 uh, miles of, of channels, which a large portion of that is Harris County Flood Control District right away, so right away that we maintain. The star here that you see on the map to the left is approximate location of, of where we are today. Uh, this map here, I, I like it a lot. Uh, this map kind of describes the, the jurisdictions within a, a complete drainage system. Uh, to the left here, you have a what's labeled as city or municipal jurisdiction. Is going to be your roadside ditches, uh, storm sewers that uh, capture the initial rainfall into the neighborhoods to drain them out to a channel or detention basin. The portion to the right is Harris County Flood Control District jurisdiction that typically lies between the top of the channel, about where it starts to go down uh, into the, the bottom, with about 60 feet or so with 30 feet on either side for access and maintenance of Harris County Flood Control District. The portion in the middle is what's considered a shared jurisdiction. Uh, this is one that would be the detention bases that you would see in your neighborhood, which Harris County Flood Control's portion of that, of that shared jurisdiction would be the basin, maintaining it, and making sure that the basin captures and holds water to release its slower into the body. Some of the features you see here, uh, parking lot, uh, park playgrounds, soccer fields, trails, those are things that we typically enter into uh, agreements with the local, uh, local entity to put those features in for use of the community when, whenever the base is dry or there's not a storm event taking place. At the bottom here, uh, this, this is meant to sort of describe how the drainage system works. Uh, under initial design conditions, they said it was 30, 40 years ago, uh, storm sewers were sized for what they believed the amount of rainfall that fell within an area to be at that time. Um, as time goes on, you got more data and you realize that you need to upgrade that system. And so the after picture shows a larger uh, pipe or storm sewer system. When you increase the size of the storm sewer system, what that does is it, it releases more water out into a bayou faster. And because we have a no rise, uh, we have no impact or no rise community, what we try to do is not impact the people that are downstream. So even though upsides of the pipe helps the people upstream, if we don't do something with the water before it gets to the bayou, it creates problems or creates increases on the people downstream. So that's the purpose of the detention basin. So the little small pipe that you see going into the bayou, uh, 
that's typically is a smaller size that's used to let the water out slower, hold it in, within this area so that we don't create impacts on other communities. So on August 25th of 2018, uh, we held a bond election, Harris kind of voters approved, and uh, during meetings, uh, much like the one that we're here tonight, we identified 237 projects. 38 projects were added based on community input, uh, which accounted for $400 million of the bond funds that were identified. And it's kind of important you know, that you all come out to these meetings. So again, I'm excited that you're all here to get, just give us input on things that we may not see when we develop plans or uh, develop solutions. So uh, community input works. So it's good to have and, and we appreciate it. So the bond identified $2.5 billion of funds that will be, you know, supported by the voters and $2.3 billion and potential partnership funds for a total of $4.8 billion. Some of the types of projects that were identified were uh, channel modifications, stormwater detention, channel maintenance, storm repairs, home buyouts, and stu studies and uh, funding for us to partner with other jurisdictions. Uh, and again, the project to, to tonight that we're going to talk about is neither one of these projects, but it's a, it's a support effort that will help us develop some of these projects and Rick will give us more details on that. Uh, here's a map that my boss likes a lot because he understands y'all. Uh, so this is uh, this is a map that shows some of those funding partners that we enter into uh, that we enter into relationships with to sort of leverage some of those local federal tax dollars uh, those local federal tax dollars that uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, some of those funding agencies are Harris County. Uh, we have Corps of Engineers, which is one of our bigger partners. USDA and FEMA as well. Uh, HUD and EDA. Uh, they all fund different types of, of, of operations and maintenance, capital improvement projects, federal projects. It just depends on the funding source. And also the participation of the local match percentages depend on which one of the agencies we enter into a partnership with. Um, I won't spend the time trying to go through all of it now and muddling through it, but after the presentation, I'll be in the back if you all have any questions about any of those type of uh, funding partners that we are, we are currently engaged with. And with that, I'll turn it over to Rick Howard, the engineer for the project, to give you details of the project we're here to talk about tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. Um, so I'm, I'm going to put it up because I, I would like to move my face around a bit. Um, so as Marcus indicated, this is a little bit different from the typical project that you'd normally see at a public meeting. This isn't uh, the, the normal kind of detention basin kind of project. This is um, more along the lines of meeting requirements for those projects that are associated with permitting actions. Uh, so today I'm going to be presenting to you a little bit of different information than what you normally see in these presentations. Um, this is just a quick overview of what we're going to be discussing this evening. Um, the main part that I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on is, is actually this general introduction where we're going to discuss uh, how, what wetlands are, how they function, and then why your tax dollars will be spent on establishing wetlands and how this is a benefit for the county. Um, so we're going to talk about some general information. We're going to discuss what a mitigation bank is. Uh, we'll talk about some, some of the background that the uh, Flood Control District has in mitigation banking, uh, a little bit of history of the, product, of the property that we're going to be looking at, um, the proposed mitigation plan for this property, some timeline issues, and the basic stuff, and then uh, we'll end up with some maintenance and management uh, discussions. So, what are wetlands? This is every wetland biologist that starts off with a discussion about what a wetland is. Um, so wetlands, to be really brief, are kind of a transitional zone between dry ground and open water. So it's kind of the interface between where your, where your, your land meets the stream. And so they provide a specific set of functions. Um, a lot of them are very important. 
provides habitat, it provides uh, flood attenuation, it provides all kinds of things like that. Um, we've listed these three here that are the ones we really want to hone in on, and that's nutrient chemical uh, uptake, uh, providing habitat for wildlife, and um, discharging water at, at a decreased rate. These are, these are all things that we look at as biological, physical, and chemical components of those weapons. And those are things that are helpful in, in, uh, in protecting the environment and those sorts of things. So this gets us to why we would be interested in a project that establishes these things. Well, that gets us to our regulatory discussion. Um, essentially, the, the organization that's in charge of managing watersheds and, and wetlands in, um, in, in terms of production, or in terms of, of uh, productivity of those, of those lands into, into usable ground, uh, is the Army Corps of Engineers. And the Army Corps of Engineers has a jurisdiction that exerts, that it exerts through basically the floodplain um, and follows along these, these water bodies up to and including them for that generally 100 year flood plan. Um, so there's two real concerns for Harris County Flood Control District, and that has to do with these two regulations. One is the Clean Water Act, Section 44 of the, of the Clean Water Act, and the other one is Section 10 of the, the Rivers and Harbors Act. And these two different regulations are regulations that determine what a permittee must do to develop a project within the jurisdiction of the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, the Corps has been charged with what they call a no net loss standard, which basically says that whatever you destroy, whatever wetland functions or, or water body functions are destroyed through a project has to be mitigated for through that project's implementation. So what this mitigation bank does, or what it's intended to do, is to provide that mitigation for specific watersheds within Harris County. Uh, and that's important because that gets into how the county and how flood control district moves through its permitting process. And we'll get to that here in a, a little bit more detail in a second. So what's a mitigation bank? Since we've kind of talked about what a wetland is, let's talk about what a mitigation bank is. Um, mitigation banks are projects that seek to create, restore, enhance, preserve. There's a whole bunch of different terms that the, that the court looks at when it discusses mitigation banking. But mitigation banks do those different processes. They create, restore, enhance, preserve um, those wetland functions and then trade those created or restored functions for sites that have been impacted. So we can take an impact in one location and say, well, we're offsetting it by building this wetland mitigation in advance of that in another location. That's what this bank does. Um, and it produces these things through what we call mitigation credits, which is kind of a, an ethereal kind of idea. But essentially what they are is it takes those functional values, that biological, chemical, and physical values that we talked about just a second ago, and it converts them into tradable units. So the bank can accumulate these, these tradable units and then they can use them to offset the impacts of other locations. Um, so those credits in the case of wetland mitigation banking are directly tied to those three, those three functions. Um, and having those credits available means that as the county proceeds with projects, they're able to offset for those projects using credits from the bank that have already been built. So we produce credits and we use those to debit for impacts throughout the county. So a little bit about the permitting process and where this comes into play for the, for the county. Uh, there's really three entities, I kind of alluded to this a second ago. Um, there's really three entities that are involved when you talk about <coughs> permitting, mitigation, and uh, the, the roles of the different agencies. Uh, the first one of those is the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers is going to oversee permitting aspects and make sure that federal, federal permits are being processed correctly. Uh, you have the permittee or the sponsor of a project. In this case, we'd be talking about Harris County Flood Control or uh, Harris County uh, uh, Toll Road Authority or any of the other Harris County governmental agencies. And then you have the mitigation bank itself. So before any permitting project goes through, if you're using a bank, that bank has to be approved. And that bank goes through a process of submitting what they call a mitigation banking instrument to the core. The 
or reviews that instrument, determines whether it's successful or not. If it's not going to be successful, then they want to prove it. If they determine that it is going to be successful, they approve it and then determine how many credits are going to be allowed uh, for that bank. So the bank gets approval from the core after submitting an application to the core. Similarly, if you've got a project that you're trying to develop, say you're putting in a detention base or something like that, um, the permittee then has to provide a permit application to the core. The core reviews that permit application, determines whether it's complete or not. Um, and that includes mitigating for lost weapons that are involved with the project. And then approves that permit. So usually, the last step uh, for a bank to be approved is to acquire the mitigation necessary to offset those impacts. So this tends to be a, a very critical step, um, especially if you're in watersheds that have very limited credit, credit availability. There's, if there aren't any banks that can serve it, service that, that means that that permittee then has to come up with some other mitigation option. They can't just buy a credit and, and walk away. Um, so what this allows, what this, what the bank is, uh, allows the permittee to do is to uh, transfer that uh, that liability for lost wetlands to the bank, um, and that allows the bank to take on that liability in exchange for the credits that they that they generate. Um, this ensures that the projects can move quickly, uh, and from a from the, the, the county standpoint, it also helps us to reduce the cost to the county. Um, bank prices can be, or credit prices can be very expensive, especially for private banks. So if you have a public bank, or publicly owned bank, that the county can use to purchase those credits, it helps to stabilize the cost of those credits, and also ensures that that mitigation part is already taken care of before the project's even proposed. So it prepares you to be successful, is a good way to look at it. Um, Flood Control District has a long history with mitigation banking, especially by comparison with the Galveston District. Um, Greens Bayou Wetland Mitigation Bank is the first bank that, that uh, Flood Control put in. It's, it was established in the, in the uh, early 90s, um, approved in 1995 by the Corps. That project was then expanded in 2014 through a, a revision of, that, of the mitigation banking instrument. Uh, and I believe, I'm not sure about this, but I'm pretty sure that it's the oldest bank in, in the Galveston district. Um, so it's been around since even before the 2008 mitigation rule. Uh, the next bank that they implemented is this one, Katie Hopper Mitigation Bank. Uh, and they also have another project, the, Katie, or the Crosby Eastgate project, that's on its way. It's in the, in the early stages of being developed. Uh, in addition to those three main projects, there are countless small, project-related mitigation sites. And you'll actually see a couple of examples of those as we, as we discuss this particular project. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the project that actually came out through the cold weather. That's Katie Hopper Mitigation Center. So the bank itself is located here off of, uh, across, or, uh, off of Katie Hopper Road, right near the intersection with House and Hall. Uh, you can see uh, 99 off there to the east a little bit. Take a second here. Um, you can see the FedEx facility down here. Um, what's that? You built a very nice four bank on the did. Um, so that, that red track, or that red box that you see in there is the actual mitigation bank site. The larger black box that surrounds it is the 448 acre uh, tract that Harris County Flood Control District controls. Um, that houses not only the Gate Hopper Mitigation Bank site, but also several permanently responsible or, or individual kind of um, uh, mitigation sites. Um, let's see, we've got some, some history of the site. Uh, the 1920s Topo shows this area is pretty flat. Uh, that little inset in there, you can see there's a little depressional area in there. Um, and in the 1930 aerials, we see this already been converted to agricultural use or at best is pasture. Uh, most likely it's probably rice farming. Um, by 1984, it looks strikingly similar to the way it looked in 1930. I guess rice prices hadn't quite crashed yet, uh, so they're still doing ag, ag work on, on property. And by 2014, we see all kinds of new swimming lines all over the place, a whole bunch of things happen. Those, the, the images that you see in 2014, 
Um, those little sites that you see all over the site are in those mitigation projects that I was just describing, where the county was having to kind of piecemeal together mitigation for projects in these watersheds. Uh, and we'll get to the importance of why you're having to patch these together uh, so much in just a little bit. But I want you to kind of pay attention to this image of the 2014, uh, the, the 2014 image of, of, of the bank site, because we're going to come back to that a little bit in, in a couple minutes. So the plan for the mitigation bank is to create prairie wetlands typical of the Gulf Coastal Plains. Um, and that's going to serve to generate herbaceous or uh, you know, emergent wetlands, that's what we biologists call them. Uh, and those, those herbaceous wetlands are going to be used to create credits and we offset those credits in projects that are in that impact the area. Um, the way that it's going to work is that they're going to scrape layers of, of material off the ground until we get down to about six inches or so above the clay, pan, the clay pan or the, the clay layer in the soils. Uh, so that'll be excavating to a depth of between one and two feet, depending on where you are on the property. Um, and what that clay does, it helps to retain the, the rainwater that falls on the, on the property. So we end up having these little kind of shallow areas that hold water for a prolonged period of time. Um, the goal, as you see on the, on the, the uh, figure behind me, you've got all these kind of black, pondy looking things on there. Those are areas that are going to be, how, that are going to be holding prolonged saturation or, or inundation, which means it's fancy word for flooding. Um, they're going to flood temporarily throughout the year, and then the areas around that will flood occasionally. It's going to be something that holds water during extreme rain events. Um, but for the most part, this is going to look very much like it does today. It's going to look like a prairie. It's going to be a wet prairie field. Um, soils that are excavated from those pits are going to be used to form these kind of micro uplands that, we, that are called Nemo Mounds. Those are typical of this area. Um, in mounds formed from, through natural geological processes that we can talk about at length afterwards if you like, but um, I'll, I'll save it for now. Um, but those new mounds that we're going to construct are going to kind of emulate the naturally existing new mounds that would have been found throughout this area. Uh, and they themselves house a pretty unique uh, ecological community. Um, any of the ex excess uh, soils that we can't form the new mounds with are going to be hauled off in Place in the okay. uh, Will developers get to scoop that dirt up and take it and build it? Uh, don't know. We'll, we'll do questions on that. Um, once those new rounds are formed, once we get done with our construction, uh, the, the property will be placed under a conservation easement that will be held by Cape Prairie Conservancy. Just happy to talk to you about saving Cape Prairie. Um, and that will put this property under a permanent restriction from being developed into anything other than a conservation site. So once this project is implemented, this site is going to be off limits for development and it will not, it's not even going to be turned into a park. You can't do anything that's going to, to implement or it's going to impinge on that, uh, on that conservation use. Um, so, like I said, we want, I want you guys to kind of hone in on that 2014 image. This is a, you'll see that in the inset down here at the bottom, and then blown up here to the, to the, uh, to the left. Um, that blown up picture and the inset show you the exact same area in 2014, the inset, and blown up in 2019. Um, so this project, this is, a, this is one of those Individual, individually uh, constructed mitigation projects uh, just tied to one of the one flight control district's um, project impacts. And because the, the projects are located within the Attic Spark or watershed, there's no place that the Army Corps of Engineers will allow you to get mitigation for projects in, the, in those two watersheds other than within that watershed. Uh, it's actually part of their goal to keep Addison Barker from failing during, during flood events. So any impacts that are in Addison Barker have to be mitigated in Addison Barker directly. They actually have a, a separate, um, separate banking area that can be used. Um, so the idea of this is to, we, this project was actually kind of developed as a pilot for doing this kind of work at larger scale. Uh, so it's very similar to what we plan on doing for, for Kate Hockley. Uh, and so the Kitty Hawkins Mitigation Bank is going to amplify this effort 
multiple times to take something that's working at a five acre scale and draw it up to a 140 acre scale. Uh, so you can see in 2014, newly constructed, a bunch of, bunch of white sands all around the place. Uh, and then by 2019, it's vegetated in, it's housing a, a rich vegetation community and also uh, serving as habitat for migratory birds, the waterfowl, and fishes as well. Okay, this one's gonna take you kind of flopping your head over. Then you got a broken neck and just look at it off of your shoulder. Uh, this is a conceptual site layout of the project. We've kind of turned it on its, on its side a bit. Um, and the idea here is to give you some semblance of an idea of what the, what the project's gonna look like. I wish that we didn't have such a limited set of colors that we could use, um, but the blue areas are not going to be ponds. It looks like it on there, but that only is supposed to represent the fact that those areas are going to be seasonally inundated. They will hold water uh, during certain times of the year, but the rest of the year they're going to be just muddy, muddy areas on, on the landscape. Uh, the areas around those ponded areas uh, are going to be uh, saturated soils and they're still going to be supporting native uh, herbaceous vegetation that would be kind of indicative of a, of a wet prairie. Here's a little simulation of what it will look like from just south of that 2014 mitigation site. Um, it'll look very subtle. Yeah, actually, when we when we did this mock-up, this is a you can't tell, but it is a 3D mock-up of the property, and we actually exaggerated the topography by 50%. So these massive mountains of light brown that you see are the Nima Mountains that will stand a rip-roaring nine inches tall at max. So they're very small, very subtle features that are just kind of going to be rolling through the, through that prairie, and those depressional areas will be uh, holding water during during wet seasons. So you, you may see some ponding after, say, a 10-year event, um, definitely say after 100-year events and things like that, which we get. Um, but for the most part, you're going to have a lot of wet prairie, and something you're really not even going to be able to notice from Katie Hawker Road. So I want to give you some of the mitigation concept, context and some of the kind of um, conservation context of the property. Uh, this shows, this map shows several properties that are nearby that are currently serving as either mitigation banks or mitigation projects or are otherwise under some sort of conservation easement. And as you can see, there's vast swaths of land that are under conservation easement held, held by um, Cape Prairie Conservancy. There are conservation easements held by, by Land Conservancy, by Texas Land Conservancy. Several different organizations control property out here uh, and manage it for the sake of conserving Cape Prairie. And that's actually a larger scale project that I'll let KPC talk about because their, their big goal is to save up all of Cape Prairie that they possibly can um, before it gets destroyed. Yeah, there's way more than this. I just wanted to have what was adjacent to, to the, the bank itself. So you can see this is something that's going to add to uh, existing conservation areas and really kind of amplify how, how that works. So the big goal with these kind of conservation projects is to have as much contiguous space uh, as you can possibly have. Um, so on to the nuts and bolts of the service area. The, 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 any mitigation bank is going to have a service area, which is just a way of saying where they're allowed to trade credits. In the case of uh, Katie Prairie Mitigation Bank, or, or I'm sorry, in the case of the Katie Hawkins Mitigation Bank, they're only going to be allowed to trade credits within the watersheds that you see there highlighted in pink. Um, and anything outside of that is, would require special dispensation by the Army Corps of Engineers, and it's just something that's not very often done. It's usually done when there's something that's an emergency. Um, the other part about this, this is, that is important, and I know several of you are, are concerned about this because you obviously are here because you're concerned about flooding, um, is that this project is only going to be able to service Harris County government agencies. So this is not for private developers, this is for flood control district, for Harris County DD, for Precinct 3, Precinct 4, whatever else is in there. Um, and the other agencies that are associated with Harris County. There's no private credit sale that's available for this bank. 
Um, currently, flood control district, I think you guys said there's 100 or so projects that are slated to take place inside this watershed or inside this service area. This bank does not have sufficient credits to cover all of those. Um, so this is something that flood control will probably be looking at extending out as a, as a model for other properties. Um, the other thing that's important to note about their service area is that because these mitigations operate the way they do, you can only trade mitigation credits in kind. So in other words, because this is an herbaceous wetland, it can only sell credits to somebody who has impacts to herbaceous wetlands. They can't trade forested wetlands for emergent wetlands. You can't trade streams for wetlands. It's the the water water water. Water. For the, the, the uh, particle of engineer studies. Okay. So project timeline. Um, we, we're very close to the end of the process with the Army Corps of Engineers. We expect uh, approval of the bank any day. Uh, so we expect to be going out for bids on construction sometime this month, hopefully. Everybody's fingers crossed. Uh, On-site construction is supposed to be pretty rapid because it's basically just scraping soil away and, and repositing it. Uh, so we expect that to be about 12 to 14 months, which means that we should have construction beginning sometime in the spring, summer of 2020, and ending summer of 2021. Uh, once construction is complete, we'll begin revegetation of the, of the property. Uh, that will largely consist of replanting seeds um, that are native to Cape Prairie and kind of allowing it to reestablish. Um, and lastly, uh, management main steps that are going to be taken for the project. Uh, most of what happens with mitigation banks, once they're implemented, once they're up and running, is that you have long-term monitoring where you're going to spend year after year checking and making sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, the mitigation banking instrument, the, the kind of the contract between the Army Corps of Engineers and the mitigation provider <coughs> requires you to provide uh, kind of steps to indicate that you're re reaching your, your success, um, call it success criteria. But those success criteria are based on annual evaluations and site monitoring activities. Uh, other than the site monitoring, you'll probably say, hey, if our harvesting, uh, some occasional replanting if necessary, and steps to control invasive species. If, if you're from around Harris County, you know some of our invasive species, hopefully, the beautiful, beautiful tallow that changes color every fall and that all those biologists wish would just die a horrible death. Um, but we also have some other ones like deep root sedge and uh, Cherokee grubs and some others that we really uh, want to make sure don't become a, a part of the bank. Um, so those will be controlled. Uh, we'll also be looking at uh, controlled burns every other year or as needed, depending on what's going on with the property. And those controlled burns are like the natural wildfires that would have been taking place out on, on, on prairies traditionally since the beginning of time. Um, and they help to get rid of excess vegetation that's died off and accumulated on the ground. So uh, it's really pretty simple stuff to, to maintain. Uh, and fairly innocuous to, to the neighboring landowners. It shouldn't be uh, too, too troubling. Uh, and of course, maintaining fence lines to make sure that everything stays, stays under control out there. Get you a Thank you, Rick, for that presentation, and thank you all for uh, coming here tonight and, and listening to our presentation about this project. Uh, that concludes the formal part of the evening, but we have, my name is Karen Hastings, I'm with the Flood Control District's Communications Office. Um, I'm really glad to see all you, all of you people here. Uh, we have gathered a lot of subject matter experts, engineers, and environmental experts who can answer any of the questions you have, we know you have questions. And if any of you need help with who to talk to about the particular questions you have, I can help you, uh, help put you in touch with the right person here in the room. Uh, we, if you prefer to uh, ask your questions in Spanish, we have someone who can help you with that. Uh, we also have representatives, that's Javi over there. He's busy, but he'll help you. Uh, we also have people here from uh, Harris County Project Recovery. If you had any flooding issues during Harvey, they might be able to help you with that. Um, We've got a lot of people here, so uh, come back and talk to us, and they will be glad to answer any of the questions you have. Um, so 
Thanks for the, oh, and don't forget, uh, I noticed a lot of you taking pictures. This presentation will be on the website. I get to work at 6.30, so let's see how fast I can get it up tomorrow morning. Uh, but it'll be on the website, and you'll be able to look at uh, all the slides at your leisure, and there'll be a, a recording of the presentation. And please, uh, whatever you do before you leave, if you have any uh, questions that you didn't get answered or comments you want to make about this project or any flood control project, please uh, fill up one of those cards because we uh, take note of all of those. And um, they're very helpful in planning our projects. We like community engagement, so tell us what you think. And come back to the back room and talk to our people. Thank you.